Okay, so today uh, I would like to uh, get into the topic of how we uh, fulfill our duty. How do we um, fulfill our filial duty to our parents? Because last time we learned about um, Buddhism. Uh, when we start learning Buddhism, we need to learn how to be a decent human. Uh, that means that how to be a decent human being. So this is the starting point from our Buddhist cultivation. Shaya Muni Buddha, uh, who has been giving us the talk for so many years, 49 years, 49 years. Where do we start upon these vast teachings of his? And Buddha has told us to start from filial piety. It's not, we can't, there's no beat around the bush for this thing. This is the foundation. Um, and when he said that, it's actually uh, very wise because it brings out, it puts all the um, afflictions, all the troubles, ha habits we have to the surface. Every one of us has bad habits and these bad habits created a lot of um, um, if you want to list it out one by one, it's endless. So, using um, using filial piety or xiao in Chinese, he has summarized everything that is wrong with our um, current state as ordinary beings. Because if you want to overcome your own habits, everything, every single habits, bad habits in your life, uh, if you want to uproot it, dissolve it, you have to start from filial piety. And this is the part to say, this is the, the part, this is the best part about Shaimani Buddha and his teaching. Straightforward. So we would go in depth about filial piety uh, and why Buddha start from there, why tell us to start from there if you want to go into Buddhism. So why do we begin with filial piety? How do we do that? How do we do our best in being filial? Uh, if you look at modern times, um, this concept of being loving and respect towards your elders is quite, uh, how to say, this uh, strange, foreign. Some doesn't even know. Because some people, a lot of people have this idea. Uh, as long as I have money, I earn a lot of money, I can support my parents with a lot of uh, good food, good shelter, uh, let them live a luxurious, lavish life. I think that's filial piety. But is it? Is it actually filial piety? Did we just do that? You can't say it's not. It's treating them well, right? It's treating your own parents well. But to be actually filial piety, you cannot measure it. It is, it, it's not quantifiable. Uh, you can't use money, how much money you give your parents to measure how filial you are. Because what happens to those who are poor? Who are poor? Uh, does it mean that only the rich people can be filial and the poor people cannot? No, right? So we need to have a wisdom to regard these teachings, like to look at this part. So how do we do that? How, how do we actually fulfill our filial piety towards our parents? Uh, what kind of attitude should we have? This is a very important question for a, a youth young people, because this idea is quite um, distant, so we need to re remind ourselves. Some people might say, cook good food uh, for parents, buy good clothing or gifts for them, and that's what we call perfecting the filial piety. But it's not 
it's not it's not there yet because uh, anyone can do that uh, there's no need to practice or cultivate at all anyone can if they earn enough money they just buy uh, whatever give whatever clothes whatever food to their parents and that's considered as filial piety if they want tv buy them tv is that called fulfilling filial piety no a lot of people uh, in this era <laughs> if you talk to them say I want to talk uh, I want to uh, share with you about the importance of being filial towards your elders or being loving and respect towards your elders a lot of people would be saying are you out of your mind um, or are you outdated are you one of those um, people who were uh, like a statute made from 1,000 years ago, never, ch never change according to the era? Isn't Buddhism about following the era, like as in adapt to the era? So why do we stick to such outdated concepts? Uh, what is this era now? No? Yes, this is a common idea, common, um, how do I say, this is, this is a view that's shared by a lot of people nowadays. And some even say Buddhism itself is outdated, uh, cannot follow, adapt to the time, to the era. Some even told me, uh, what, uh, Master, you know what era is this? It's the era of looking forward to the wealth. Uh, without money, without wealth, uh, even though wealth cannot do everything, but without wealth, it's it's a lot of pain. Time is money. <laughs> Some people, when they say it, you heard, it might make sense, right? Without money, how can you eat? How, without money, how can you pay for your living expenses or buying clothes or building Dharma Center? Without funds, how do you have offerings? Right? It makes sense, but we need to see it from a point of wisdom. From We need to look at it wisely instead of being dragged by it, being enslaved by that idea. Because it will push us towards uh, extremes in hedonism and all that. Everything is about money, becomes extreme now. So back to filial piety, uh, if you look at the West uh, in regards to this idea of Xiao, um, education is very common, very developed. Uh, it's everywhere, everyone got, got educated. But unfortunately, these kind of human values, uh, moral values about love and respect with parents, about how you uh, live with others, people peacefully, harmoniously, is neglected. Moral values neglected. They don't have a like concept of filial. Like most of them only retain the value of taking only taking care of only your children. So only take care of your children. Children needs is the one who needs to be taken care. Not just the West anymore. It's uh, it's already commonplace throughout the world. Uh, the up, the elders is focusing on the youngest and neglecting their elders. So as a children, as a son and daughter of, of the parents, they focus their gaze is towards next generation. And very few will look back at their elder generations, at their older generations. So being a old man, uh, old woman in this era is a is a it's very lonely. Very familiar tight is very loose. 
In my dharma, uh, the Dharma place, a host, but there's a lot of elderly people. I ask them, why do you like to come to here? Uh, and usually they come by themselves. A lot of these elderly um, practitioner, brothers and sisters, they told me, no one uh, with me uh, at home. I feel lonely. And when I come to temper, I can have people talk with. Uh, temper is good because of that. I have social environment. Because at home, everyone's busy with their own family, with their work. Uh, I can't find a chance to talk with them often. So this is a reality facing a lot of families nowadays. And think about ourselves, we will be old one day, right? Uh, that kind of one part of one type of suffering is loneliness. Loneliness itself is suffering, right? So, yeah. Why do I frame this from this perspective? Uh, I would like to use a, a I'd like to give you an example. Uh, so that you have a concept on why filial piety is important. And then I will explain how you do it, how you fulfill the filial pieties towards your elders. For example, there's a lot of uh, couple focus on setting funds for their, I mean, focus on, on their youngest rather than their elders. Say a couple who married, have children, um, when they start you know, having the, their own family, they plan very well uh, on, you know, giving their children a funds, you know, setting up funds for their children's education and living expense. They take care, they take great care to make sure their children were ta well taken care of. Uh, some even did that before they married, uh, before they have children. Uh, because they need to think about funding for their children's um, education, you know, universities and all that, projects and all that. Like my sister, I asked her, why do you have to, why do you work so hard in, you know, making a living and earning your money? And my sister would reply without thinking, uh, without money, how can I help to support my children? So that, that's the framework. Uh, the emphasis is heavily on children. And that's the part where parents are great because they all think about their own children at the, their own expense. But as a children, uh, it's supposed, yeah, it's correct to have this planning. But how many are, how many among these couples think about their own parents, say planning a retirement fund or giving them a, a fund for their elderly people so that they are settled. Some even, um, some from a wealthy family uh, and their parents are very rich, they, they don't even think about, you know, helping saving for emergencies you know, to help their parents. So they don't think like that. Some, uh, they are like, they are good people like this, but very few. But as you can see from news, most of the cases uh, think like this. My parents are wealthy. Uh, now I like to wait out my parents so that I can split the inheritance when they pass away. So they are looking at the money rather than their own parents. Mm. So the two eyes are focused, the whole mental <laughs> energy is focused on how to get the money rather than taking care of their parents. And some even worse, they think about my children, my, my siblings got more than I have. That's not fair. Uh, so say like you plan for your own children and your children don't look after your inheritance rather than yourself. <laughs> so we need to know about this. It sounds like we're sharing the inheritance from our parents, but most of the time, the reality is they are fighting over the court, outside the court, over the inheritance. So being a parent, 
Sometimes it's a hard thing because without money, you can't support them. Too much money, you have this problem. Everyone fighting for inheritance. So having a children who is not filial, it's a lot of pain waiting for you. I myself have witnessed a few years ago that a, a parents, right, uh, this father has passed away not long ago. Their children already argue for that, for inheritance, for the money. Votes over the inheritance of their parents, of their father. This kind of attitude, you know, how can you let your parents pass in peace, right? How can he, their parents pass in peace? Mm. Some even doesn't even wait until their parents pass away. They already did that while their parents are still alive. Some even worse, as worse as uh, they fought so much over the inheritance, they neglected the funds needed to help their parents in the hospital. Right, when their parents got ill due to old age, they even neglected that part. So if we look at this, all these cases that actually happens in these societies all over the place, like read the news in each society, not just one part. You see that happening everywhere. So I have a friend when he's rich, Everyone likes to be his friend. When his company bankrupted, um, everyone disappeared. People nowadays, that sort of human love among each other, brotherhood, sisterhood, is losing. Everything is about money, everything is about taking advantage over others. When they eat, they think about money. They sleep, they think about money. They wake up, they think about money. Everything is about money and slave by money. Losing their humanity in the process becomes a goblin, basically. Sometimes, among different religions, um, some their parents are Buddhists, and their children is becoming a non-Buddhist. I mean, believing in different faith. So. <coughs> They, um, they even their children are threatening their own family, their own parents to believe, to follow their own faith, uh, and say and threaten them. Say when you pass away, I will not uh, take care of your, uh, you know, passings. Take care of everything that happens during your passing, the grave and all that. Uh, so, you know, even different faith. The basic human respect is there, it should be there. Human decency, that's what we call. Is it because of this era? Is it very modern to be like that? Where did it go wrong with human society? So, let's take a daily scenario rather than just inheritance. Some, when they looked at good food, uh, good clothing, good gifts, you know, daily provisions, how many were thinking about their parents first before they think about their children? Mostly are like, oh, my son like this, my daughter like this. How many think about their parents? Hey, I think my mom like this, my dad like this. Very few. Back then, I used to bring a lot of young people to a country and then observe others. Uh, like other young couples, usually. They think about their own parents. I mean, they think about their, their babies, their um, newborns, or their own ch young children. Very few think about their own parents. But you can see how where it goes when their um, children grown up. Same thing happens. This is the consequences of only thinking downwards without thinking your what comes before you. 
downwards means children, right? Upwards means your own parents. <clears throat> so I like to continue to say, is it wrong to think about your own children only? Say, as a parent, it's, is it wrong for me to think about my children, plan for my children's well-being? No, it's not. There's nothing wrong with that. But respectful practitioners, we must know that there's a saying in Chinese goes like this. A tree has its roots, so that it becomes a big tree. A water has its sources. So that it becomes a river. Remember your roots, where your roots are. Who gave you a condition to have a life? Uh, who gave you a condition so that you can live happily, uh, able to stand in the society, able to l make a living in the society? The thing you wear, the thing you eat, the thing you uh, achieved, gave it to you will help you to kickstart that. Your own parents, our own parents. So that's why when I look at uh, some uh, family who has their own parents uh, nagging them, I felt very um, happy for them. So it's also a, a joy in, in world to be nagged by your own parents. Because in my case, my mom passed away when I was studying. And my father passed away not long ago. So I become an orphan in a way. I am an orphan now. So appreciate your presence of your family. Especially, you know, when you're hungry, someone's cooking for you. When you're sick, someone's taking care of you, finding best medicine for you. When I'm sick, who take care of me? Not much people, no people. It's true. When I think, sometimes I think I live by myself. When I pass away, no one knows. When I pass away, because I'm alone, no one will know. That's why I cannot be sick. <laughs> Sometimes I, uh, every day, uh, those um, Dharma practitioners, uh, protectors, they talk to me and say, you know, they call me and say, uh, Master, please make sure your phone is on all the time, 24-7. Because if anything happened to you, I'll call to you, uh, when we try to reach you, we know something's wrong. If you close your phone, how you would you will not be able to communicate with us. <laughs> so it's such a let's say it's a it's it's a blessing to have your parents with you, still with you. And this is why in Chinese uh, ancient wisdom, they, uh, in these sages, they keep saying you have to think about your roots. Because it's to remind ourselves to be a decent human, to be a proper human. Once you become a decent human, only then you are able to uh, actually achieve happiness. If you can't even be a good human, decent human, let's not talk about pure land, going to pure land. The three upper realms, the three good realms, human, heaven realms, are not achievable at all. So being a decent human is the basic, because our parents give birth to us, nurture us and educate us. And because of them, I, we can grow up as a healthy adult, able to uh, make a living in the society, achieve great things in society. And there's a saying as well in Chinese about uh, our parents' kindness towards us. It's boundless, as boundless as the sky, as the universe. Buddha in the Sutra, uh, 
Buddha say in this sutra, sutra of profound kindness of parents and difficulties in repaying them. Uh, it's as they describe uh, their parents' kindness as like the heavens, the sky. There's no end to it. Sky's the limit. And no matter how much you do, no matter what you do, it's very hard to repay them in full. In my case, I can't even repay them anymore when I have the ability. This is to remind ourselves importance of filial piety. And also we need to uh, learn how to uh, remember their kindness. Because if we don't remember what they're being kind to us, their kindness towards us, how can we repay them? And also in return we repay our we do our duties to take care of them, make them happy. So that's why is uh that's why the saying of remember your roots came from. However, we need to see in modern times, those who can be filial towards their parents, it's not like no one is good, no one is filial, no one loves their own parents or elders. There are people who are loving and respecting their parents, but it's already considered a rare case. The human demographic is rare. Therefore, Buddhism, back to Buddhism, uh, when you practice, they will point out among the four Bodhisattvas, you all have to start from Siddhikapa, Bodhisattva Siddhikapa, Dijang. And the sutra about Bodhisattva Siddhikapa is the original vow of Siddhikapa, Bodhisattva Siddhikapa. It talks about filial piety, about roots and foundation of a human, of a Buddhist, is a filial piety and repaying kindness. Because if you do that, you are a good example to the world. Everyone will felt the importance of being good, remember the goodness, kindness, and repaying the kindness of their dear parents. Because if a person can't even remember and repay the kindness of others, how can you, how can that, how can this person stood his ground in the society? How can this person survive in this society? Able to develop in this society? How can you have a harmonious and prosperous life? This is why this sutra original vow of Bodhisattva Siddhikapa, Di Zhang Jing, becomes the foundation of 49 years of Shaimuni Buddha's Dharma. So it's the groundwork for Buddhism to grow and humanity to grow. It's a need, it is a necessity for human beings to learn that. Although that's why although education is very good, highly developed in the Western nations, this concept of paying kindness, feed piety, is non-existent or uncommon. Not just the West, right now it's global, universal. And if this society, this world keeps going on like that, forgetting their roots, forgetting being kind, then being a human in this kind of world is to a torture. It's a lot of suffering. It will get more and more torturous, more and more suffering. It's not, we are not trying to make it pessimistic or depressing. But because this is the trend where we are going towards. For example, uh, a lot of people uh, develop or educated in the West or grown up in that society. They are very curious about the ritual of ancestor remembrance. 
or we call ancestor worship. They felt very weird. Like some follow their own parents, Asian parents, um, back in the East and do this worshipping to the ancestor. They felt very weird. Because ancestor has been, you know, passed away centuries, millennium ago, like thousands of years ago. Why do we remember these people who we never met? Why do we remember them at all? And because of that kind of um, view, they treat it as superstitious. Say in Chinese, there's a very important period. It's called Qingming. It means like uh, it's a day where we uh, we sit the grave of our ancestors, pass away families. And many who join the family to sweep the grave. Uh, this is a common uh, thing we do when we visit the grave. They are weird and not understand why do we still visit those who pass away. And a lot of people, a lot of these uh, traditions now stop at the elderly people because they still have the idea of I still need to remember my grandparents, my ancestors. But nowadays, young people, you, you, you see that has uh, stopped practice among the young people nowadays. Some even in the temple. One of the lay Buddhists, they talk to me, says, Master, when I pass away, please spread my urn after my uh, fumigation uh, to the seas. So, I told him, you cannot do that because we never know who goes first. The world is impermanent. So you cannot do that. Like You cannot just jiao dai like that. You cannot just say like that. So without knowing why, a lot of people treat this kind of ancestor worship as superstitious, practical. It's normal. It's normal. Why? No one's saying anything about why. That's why. No one's saying about why you do that. Why we have to, you know, remember our ancestor, worship our ancestor. Like the act of worshiping the ancestor, what does it mean? No one's saying about that. Just follow, that's it. In Indonesia, myself, I, I promote ancestral worshipping, uh, I uh, promote ancestral remembrance so that they are remembering, uh, know how to uh, felt gratitude, uh, experience the gratitude, the, 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 the feeling of gratitude towards their uh, parents and ancestors. That's the point. However, the... Um, um, COVID happens, it, it cuts short of our activities. I hope that in future Sydney could do that as well. We as ancestral remembrance. Uh, if it's not promoted, that means no one explaining why we do that. What's the core value behind this ancestral worshipping, act of ancestral worshipping, right? Then human is, that's it, it's gone. Humanity is gone. That's why I felt like I encouraged Sydney uh, Temple to encourage the spirit of remembrance towards our ancestor. <clears throat> so that they cultivate a sense of uh, gratefulness, experience the gratefulness towards uh, their own parents and their own ancestors. But in, in all honesty, uh, people are not aware of it. That's why. Buddha told us the Chinese word filial piety is very well made. In Chinese word, the word for filial piety. Uh, this is why this is one of the examples why Chinese character could be regard, is regarded as the best, complete, like it's the best among many words made in the world. Why is it the best? Because it has been passed down for 5,000 years without stopping. Because Chinese character is made of 
symbols. Every symbol has meanings, a lot of meanings. It can go everywhere. It carries wisdom inside. And we must understand these Chinese characters were made according to six principles. We call it the six writings. Filial piety is based on the writing, one of the six writings. One of them is called ideographs. What is ideographs? Ideograph, when you look at this word, immediately you experience the meaning it carries. So the word is supposed to show you the idea straight away. Like patience. In Chinese word is combined of like ninja, you know the nin uh, in Japan is used the same kanji. It's on top is a knife, at the bottom is heart. That means even the heart is on top of your even the sword is on top of your heart, you must preserve, persevere. And this is the feeling of patience. You need to hold on to this in, in this to these um agitations that agitates you. So in this society it's even more important to be patient. So back to the word filial piety. Uh, we already mentioned the combination of two other Chinese characters into this one filial piety. It combines elder and young. Uh, when two becomes one, then it is filial piety. A lot of foreigners or well, nowadays it's common, <laughs> back then it's foreigners, um, they say generation gap, right? Daiko, oh, I don't understand my parents, you know, okay, boomer, all that. Why does that happen? We could understand it as absence of filial piety, absence of heart to heart, absence of oneness between the elders and the youngest. Because we must understand one reality. Youngers will have the youngest, elder will have their own elders. They are one thing. The elder become the younger. I mean, the younger, elder was once the younger, and the younger will become the elder. So they are one. In Buddhism, what do we learn about filial piety? In Mahayana Buddhism, filial piety, the whole universe, the whole of the universe is one with ourselves, like a body, not a family, a body. Uh, this is very profound, straight to the core of it. Because when you expand filial piety, like love and respect, when you expand it, it can go all the way to the end of the universe, which is endless. Other than Buddhism, Buddhist Sutra, there's no teachings or philosophies that can expand this to this level. To, they can talk about filial piety to this level, to this scale. Because without Buddhism, we couldn't fully grasp the profoundness of filial piety. Beyond just your parents, because it's about one with everyone else, everything. How can you, uh, how can left hand uh, calculate against the right hand? You know what I mean? They don't be calculated with each other. So understanding this, if you uh, humiliate others, you are humiliating yourself. If you're hurting or harming others, it goes to harming yourself. If you understand why we need to be Compassion, be filial. We will understand why Buddha told us to be filial. No, knowing, that, knowing this relationship, we we'll understand why Buddha tells us to start from filial piety. In Buddhism, there is a there is a there is a sutra, a Brahmanet sutra, Brahmajala Bodhisattva Sila sutra. So it's about precepts of a sutra, conduct of a Bodhisattva. Um, you have to expand your love and respect towards your parents, i.e. filial piety towards your parents, beyond them, to all beings. 
And this is the standard set by um, Chayamuni Buddha in this Brahmanet Sutra towards all the Bodhisattvas. As a Bodhisattva, to qualify as a Bodhisattva, you need to have this kind of heart, this kind of filial heart towards not just your parents, everyone. Everyone's my parents, everyone's my father, everyone's my mother. Because every single beings, not just sentient only, beings, they are future Buddha and our parents in past lives. This is the foundation of Buddhist Philippi. Oneness with the whole universe, love all. Because everyone is one with you. This is very deep, uh, very, very profound um, understanding. So in daily life, how do we start with this? How do we achieve this perfection of Vidapaiti? The so Buddha has already given us the foundation, the basis, the theoretical foundation of Vidapaiti. If you can treat, if you can start from your parents, love and respect your parents and expand this love and respect towards all beings, then you are Bodhisattvas. This is why Bodhis, uh, Amitabha Buddha is great. Because he treat everyone like he treat his own dear parents. He, his way to show his love to all beings is pure love. As a human, it is on our level. How do we do that? My mom passed away. Some, some might say, my pa I'm very old, I'm 80 already. How do I even be filial at this stage? Right? Uh, what should I do? Number one. There are three in total how we uh, perform Philippi in our daily life. First, towards the people, towards any encounter, towards the material world, our environment. We must be grateful. Uh, like how we felt from our parents, their love from them. We use that kind of love towards all beings. Because in this life, it's very hard for us to repay fully our parents' love. But the least we can do in our repayment of this kindness is to expand this love towards everything you interact, the people, the encounters, the events, and the actual material world. Buddhism, we say, we categorize into four targets of repayment of kindness. First is parents, then is triple gem, which is teachers. We start from parents by being loving and respect with them. Only then we expand to our teacher. When you love your parents, you will learn how to respect the teachers. And then towards the countries that gives you a safe environment and then towards all beings. Because think about ourselves, our position in this world, are we alone? Can you survive by being your, with yourself, by, be, by being alone? No. And this is where Triple Gem is precious. Dharma teaches precious because they teach you about this. They, take, they talk to you about oh, yeah, opening up your mind <coughs> towards all beings, being grateful towards them. And then we move on to country. Without country stability, how can we prosper? How can we survive, continue to live happily? And all beings who gives all the services, all the materials, resources, without them, how can we have a environment like happiness right now? Like, when someone scold you, you also need to be grateful. When people criticize you, we need to practice gratefulness towards them. Defamation, slanderousness, humiliations. We all need to learn how to be grateful towards these people, even these people. Because no matter what happened to us in future, no matter what happened, no matter what, who did what towards you, or no matter who you are in future, doctor, teachers, 
leaders of your own view, or public servants, or being a parents, uh, no matter what you're doing, you must always remember cannot lose our moral compass and virtues. That means we cannot lose our ground. Cannot have, we cannot live without a bottom line. <coughs> because if you always cross the bottom line, which is against your conscience, what you, the consequences is not impacting only your own family, you're impacting your own next generations and also your own past generations. Say, if you always do things against conscience, doing something that's harmful towards others, how would, uh, how would the society look at you? How would the society look at your family and your own de descendants? This is such a big um, trespassing, transgression. So the point is, no matter how wealthy you will, you will be in future, or how powerful you are in future, that's not the main point. It's just a fruit. The root, you may not lose your compass, you must not lose your virtues as a human. How do we be a virtuous person? Start from Buddhism, start from listening to the Dharma, often listen to them. Like Master Teacher Chai talk about, start with Di Zi Gui, Master Jing Kung say about the Tai Shang Gai Pian, the you know, cause and effect. Uh, and and the Ten Virtuous Deeds of uh, Sutra of Ten Virtuous Deeds. So all these good teachings. And the last one is in the path of being Bodhisattvas, we need to guide our parents to liberate from the sufferings of life and death. Now, which is help them to give rise to the vow to reborn in pure land. Only when they born in pure land, they no longer have to suffer life and death, death and life. And that's when, when your parents go to pure land, it is when your filial piety is complete. Same for us, when we chant Amitofo, even though I'm 90 years old, if I chant Amitofo earnestly, when I age to born in pure land, when, uh, when my time's up, I will not fall into the three logo rims. And this is the best thing we can do to for our parents. Because not only you are helping yourself when you go to Pure Land, you're also able to know where your parents are, or parents are, uh, and help them to increase better their current predicament, their current standards. In Taiwan, there was a, a lady, lay Buddhist, um, who accompanied her mother, uh, Chan Amitofo, accompanied her mom to pray to Amitabha Buddha, uh, encourage, uh, describing how good Pure Land is, there's no life, no death, no age, no illness, uh, how good that place is, and that's the only place where we can be together forever. And this is how she encouraged her mom to chant Amitofo, to be strong in the vow to born there. And that's how we fulfill our filial piety towards our parents. If we go to Pure Land, if you go to Pure Land, you have considered fully repaying your parents. If you're able to reach Pure Land, that means you are able to repay it in full towards the parents. So how do we start this journey? We start from being grateful, being uh, ready to repay any time their kindness, and then move on to increasing our virtues, our moral 
uh, conduct. And then in the end, we go for pure land. <laughs> so, in summary, what's the best way to practice Pilipati chanting Amitabha earnestly? So, this is the simple explanation on how we um, fulfill our uh, duty of Pilipati. If I go too deep, you cannot, if I want to go in detail, go in depth, you cannot finish the concept of filial piety in one day. But what we need to know is how do we practice it? We start from our attitude, from our conduct, which is conduct. Uh, parents do not need you to, for you to worship them every day or, you know, like, like you worship Buddha, they don't need you to do that. They just want your attitude, your loving attitude, good attitude, harmonious attitude that can establish a very beautiful, um, peaceful relationship among parents and children. Because if we have a very bad temple, very um, rebellious, uh, temple attitude towards them it's causing them to worry so to be filial to be loved and respect towards them we need to use the best condition best attitude we have towards them offer them with our best attitude virtuous conduct Filial piety is also can be considered as hard, but at the same time, it's also easy to be achieved. Because towards others people, we are virtuous. We can easily be patient, uh, be kind. But towards our family, we can't do our towards our parents. We can't be as gentle, as loving as we do towards others. If we can't do that towards our parents, being kind towards our parents then whatever kindness we have towards others is false, it's not real. If our parents is uh, being very bad temper or bad habits, we need to be patient, we need to use a very good attitude to melt their you know, shell. So that one day they will be touched by your um, change, by your kindness, by your gentleness. So this is how we, as a children of our, as a son and daughter, treat our parents. Or need to ask this question: Am is my attitude good towards my parents? First, is my word being kind towards my parents? This is something we need to know and keep asking ourselves every day. So this is, uh, that's it for today. Uh, next Wednesday, I would like to continue uh, Buddhism, understanding Buddhism, other uh, parts of it. Because about seven, six or seven courses, uh, we would complete this, um, uh, this um, teachings. If I have any uh, bad, um, how to say, if there's any misunderstanding from the way I expressed these teachings, uh, please give me a feedback. Because the point is, we all know a lot of uh, teachings, we know a lot of what is right, but when we implement it, we need to practice how to implement it. What do we practice? Being grateful, aware of others' kindness, being uh, repaying the kindness towards them. That's the basic of being a decent human being. So I wish you all a healthy, uh, healthy life. Chan um, for earnestly and everything according to your wishes. Thank you, Amitofo. Let us uh, repay our gratitude, uh, dedicate our merits. May the merits and virtues accrue from this book. Adorn, repay the karma, karmic creditors of many lives, repaying the sentient beings of all beings, of all, all time. 
may all the calamities turn from big to small, small to nothing. The pain the four kind above relieve the suffering of three bows below. May those who see and hear of this aspire to invoke the body heart. Cultivate the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitofo. Okay, bye bye. 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 Bye bye.